Hello guys, welcome back to our microphone. <laughs> this is a microphone. Kuba just stole this from the farm. Uh, we are sitting next to the field with corn and we need a microphone because we left ours at home. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. So for today's video, I would like to talk about my culture shock after I moved here in the Czech Republic from the Philippines. Yes, and a little bit of story time for you guys. Like we got together with Gwen like three years ago and then I came to the Philippines first. I spent there some time and then I brought Gwen here to the Europe, to the country Czech Republic. And I can say it was a huge culture shock for me in the Philippines. And of course, it's a huge culture shock for Gwen here in Czech Republic. And in this video, Gwen is going to share with you all those culture shocks which came on her mind and we will discuss it here together so let's go for that Gwen has actually a list of every culture shocks. so I got seven, 19 culture shocks I had so I'll try to go over this um, culture shock so the number one culture shock for me is language so for me it's the language is the number one culture shock Three years ago, before I met Cuba, I didn't know that there is a Czech Republic's existence. I didn't know that there is this country in Europe which named Czech Republic. So the first time I met him, I thought he's from America and then he told me that he's from Czech Republic and they have a different language called Czech. So I was really shocked after hearing it that his language is Czech and I have a zero knowledge about it. So, they said this language is one of the most difficult languages in Europe and I would say it's true, it's really hard and especially the pronunciation, it's really really hard, so. Like, yes, I can say it's really hard, even the Czech people don't know how to speak Czech properly and write and that's one of the things which is complicated for foreigners in Europe because from all those countries which are here in Europe every country has the different language and even if you are speaking English it will not help you because mostly the people living here in Europe I'm not saying all of them but most of them don't know how to speak English so it really makes you to learn the language of that each country if you want to stay here and it's really a bit complicated talking about Czech language so yeah and then sometimes Kuba is teaching me how to speak Czech but still hard for me I only know basics especially jedno pivo prosim jedno jedna I don't know which means one beer please <laughs> yeah one beer please talking about that I'm learning that I learned Gwen how to speak Czech it's really not that easy we know how to speak Czech, but the other thing, you need to know how to learn it. And I'm not a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a speaker. Yeah. So second is beer drinking. Yeah. The favorite part. <laughs> so it's still hard for me to accept this culture shock because in the Philippines, beer is considered a an alcohol so if you're drinking three times in one week you are considered as an alcoholic but here in the czech republic people are drinking beer just like water they even called it as a liquid bread <laughs> and it's really surprising for me because they are drinking the whole entire glass and the glass is very very huge but in the Philippines we have a different kind of drinking way it's just like we have one small glass pouring the beer it's not even full and we share it all together to the group so that's the culture but when I came here I was really really shocked I thought Koba will share it to other people but he was drinking it alone and I was like you are an alcoholic and he was really mad at me because it's not even alcoholic here in Czech Republic it's just a regular drinking alcoholism is once you don't have control about alcohol and you are drinking alone yeah that's why it was my culture shock actually but so am i an alcoholic no it's just that different mindset we have in the philippines but yeah that's also my culture shock the third one is the transportations so 
the transportations in the Czech Republic we don't have trains and trams but in the Czech Republic they have like a very nice transportation it's very synchronized it's really organized and one thing that I was really shocked about the culture shock of transportation is that during the day their cars their trains and trams are uh, the lights are on during the day so i was like why the lights are on maybe people forgotten that the lights are on but kuba told me the reason that it's really required all the cars and all the transportation which are on the main roads even if it's daylight you it's it's mandatory to have lights on mm -hmm. which uh is quite useful for the lights which are at the back of the car but which are at the front it's not really useful but it's the rule you have to keep with that if not you will get penalty mm -hmm. yeah then i was really impressed how amazing the Czech republic in terms of transportations and roads um rules it's because they have a lot of um, road signs like uh, you cannot study you cannot drive without a driving license and you should also go to driving schools so in the philippines you don't have like that so i was really really shocked regarding with that that people should go to the driving school so they can get a driver's license and that if they can have a driver's license they can drive which will early come to you as well because gwen got the chance to sign to the driving school <laughs> to get the driving license if Gwen will want to, she will make a couple of clips and maybe the whole walk from her driving license, from her driving school and all that experience. Let's see if it will be funny. Gwen is actually already nervous now. Yeah, because I think it's a tough challenge for me, especially I don't even know how to drive a motorbike. I'm really scared of driving, so I'm not sure if I can, if I can beat the challenge but i hope i can everyone is scared at first everyone undergo that and everyone passed not everyone <laughs> but many people passed even after so many attempts they were able to pass mm -hmm. even me i was nervous and now driving like it's nothing sometimes mm -hmm. when you are driving once you are already experienced for so many years you will forget that you are driving once you are driving the drivers will understand me like you are driving and out of nowhere you will realize oh my god i'm driving for you it will be natural for you yeah so the fourth one is housing style so <laughs> when i opened the window i thought the window's falling down on my head but it was not it was just different way of like they have this kind of crisscross way of opening the window and they can like pull it upper you can open the up portion of the window or sometimes if you want you can open the side area so i was really really surprised and i thought the window's the window is broken i was really surprised like what happened but it's just the way it is and another one is that their housing style doors usually doesn't have locks so um even the rooms or just to make it clear we actually have locks but only on the main doors but inside the house if it's bedroom if it's living room we most of the time don't have locks especially in my house my father used to say always like there will be no locks in this house nobody is supposed to, to be locked like it doesn't mean we don't have privacy but no doors will be locked so that's the way but always we have the locks on the, the main, door. main doors which brings me to the question when i was in the philippines and i always came to the gwen's house the <laughs> the the doors well the doors were always open and there was no lock even from night so what we have we have lock we have made out of nails nails like not nails i don't know what is it called like something you use for building a house oh uh, so you just hammer it and yeah, nail into the nail. door and yeah. that's the way of luck Se <laughs> security in the philippines is on the first place usually we usually have a lock um inside but we don't have a lock outside of the house but yeah but in our rooms our um our rooms like cr bedrooms we usually have locks but it's not really um bother lock it's just that made of nails and you just hammer it but i was really surprised when i came here usually most commonly 
commonly houses doesn't have locks inside of the house okay so the next is foods <laughs> that's right in the philippines we have rice all the time we eat rice all the time and we don't eat without the rice but here in the czech republic instead of rice they have a we have bread potatoes rice as well of course but it's because of that what's the agriculture production of each each country like asian countries have have huge production of rice that's why the main source in their nutrition is like rice and here the production is like wet potatoes so used people are using it to make bread any kind of bakery stuff pasta potatoes everything that's why yes and they have different kinds of dumplings that's their traditional potato dish dumplings with different kinds of food like goulash smichkova snitch snitchkova svichkova na smetanie <laughs> Svičkova na smetanie. Svičkova na, na smetanie. That was the first meal you ate <laughs> once you arrived here to the Czech Republic. Yeah, so I'm really shocked. It's because in the Philippines, um, the way the way we 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 cook our foods, we usually fry it with um bunch of oils. But here in the Czech Republic, they love um preparing dish with a sauce with a dumpling. And the other different thing, in the Philippines, every dish has its own name, right? Yes. But Gwen is always asking, what's the name of this food here in Czech? Like, we don't have like the specific names for each food, but we have, if you have pork with sauce and dumpling, it's called pork with sauce and dumpling. <laughs> we are trying to keep that simple. Yeah. <laughs> if it's chicken with pepper sauce and potatoes it's chicken with pepper sauce and potatoes mm -hmm. that's it yeah and check usually have a breakfast meal or a breakfast dish so they usually eat with bread and they will they will put some cheese on it or different kinds of toppings and then we will put some meat so in the philippines we don't eat breakfast as a break uh we don't eat bread as a breakfast but we eat bread as just a snack before the breakfast <laughs> during the time of the video you could notice we needed to adjust our microphone so it can be held properly yeah so that's it <laughs> and we can move on to the another topic which mm -hmm. is pdas so do you know what's pdas i don't know what's pdas <laughs> public display act it's just like couples usually they can kiss in the public like the first time i saw it like there were couple in the in the park and there were lots of people as well as kids but they're doing french kiss and they're about to like do something more than that and the philippines couples are not doing that even just a smack kiss because our culture is very conservative so even couples are just holding their hands and if they're holding their hands that means you can really know that they are a couple that we don't kiss we don't hug in the public but here when i came in the czech republic i was really surprised of this kind of culture it's because people doesn't mind about it even like they can kiss they can do french kiss in the public like people doesn't care about that in the philippines you will be in chismes you will be you will be the topic <laughs> of each group of the people in the philippines that's right philippines yeah. are way more sensitive about that here in czech we are not but still some people should really have some borders borders sometimes it's really going over these borders in public sometimes it looks like the people are really going to do silly yeah, in the middle like of the, the public, streets like, like people and kids everywhere that's already <laughs> disgusting even for me and i'm also not into those like i'm not i'm not forcing gwen to like kissing in public yeah, and like those he's like, not allowed to kiss me in the public never i'm not allowed to kiss him <laughs> even in the philippines as well but it's i don't more mind than that, that in the philippines if you kiss me like just a smack kiss no 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 everyone is very conservative and they will talk behind your back so a connection with that um public kissing or pdas 
Um, another culture shock for me is being naked in the lake or in the river. <laughs> Kuba is also naked sometimes when he's taking a bath in the lake or in the river. But it's it's like normal, it's fine for them. But in the Philippines, it's really not. We, we are not even like, we. it's still very conservative or sensitive for, for people. If we are going to swim in the beach with a bikini, sometimes people are swimming with pajamas and t-shirts. But here, people can do like more than just a bikini. They can be naked if they want to. People will never mind it. That was the thing I was like... It was strange for me when I came to the Philippines and saw many people wearing t-shirt and long pants when they were taking bath in the sea and I was thinking like maybe don't want maybe they don't want their skin to be burned under the hot sun but it was not the reason it was the reason because they are shy and here yeah all around the Europe we have nude beaches where people are naked and it works and it's fine and it's legal yeah and people doesn't care about that in the philippines oh my gosh all grandmas grandparents and grannies and old people will get mad on you you will be like being famous on social media especially facebook if you will do that <laughs> you will call us crazy <laughs> yeah another is self-service payments and bi byobs in the philippines we don't have this kind of services we usually have cashier and assistants so the assistants are going to pack our goods but here in the czech republic you should do it yourself because there's no assistant who will assist you in everything so it was <coughs> also amazing for me because they don't need to hire an, um, many employees but people can be responsible in terms to their things so yeah it's right be away ob means as well that you can bring your own bag to pack your <laughs> things in a full pins the plastics are provided by the by the mall without payments but here if you want to get a plastic from the mall you have to pay for it yeah just to explain that self service payment it looks like this you will just get your groceries to the cart and once you will come to the cash machine where you will scan all the stuff you have you will pay and you can leave uh, it can actually if you will go to the cashier you can pay more than if you will go to that self-service uh, self-service machine because we are Czech people we are not absolutely honest and sometimes can happen we will forget to scan some goods <laughs> So it can get to the cart, but we forget, of course. We want to be that honest, but you forget. We are not professional cashiers, we are just regular people. So you forget, mm -hmm. but that's how it works. Yep, another is <coughs> the climate in the Czech Republic. Climate is perfect. Oh my God. This is one of the coldest countries in Europe, I guess. <laughs> it's not even. <laughs> but Czech Republic is very cold. For me, I'm still I'm still having hard time adjusting from the weather in a Czech Republic. in this country. It's because in the Philippines we have two kinds of seasons: rainy and dry season. So usually, if it's not rainy rainy days, the temperature goes up to 33 degrees to even higher. But here, even even like 20 degrees it's already cold for me so i have to wear jackets and right now kuba's wearing shorts as you can see oh and i'm already cool. like wearing jeans and jackets with me because it's already very cold so i'm still having a hard time adjusting for the weather i will put here a video and you will see how much gwendy is having a hard time in cold weather and especially once there is a snow so all those are just an excuse <laughs> Next one is greeting custom. So here in the Czech Republic, one of the best qualities of being a Czech is that, is that they are very polite. <laughs> they greet even strangers with Dubriden, Ahoy, Ciao, like that. In the Philippines, we have a different kind of... You know it's not a real microphone, right? Yeah, I know, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, one of the best qualities of Czech people, they greet even strangers and it's really, really nice because even if you don't know these people, they will greet you. In my country, we have a different way of greeting, maybe smiling is our gesture, but we don't really greet saying um, good morning, hello, hi, we just nod or say like smile with our faces. But here you should do like with words because if not, you'll be like, it's, it's really impolite if you will not do that. 
Yeah, it's the way once you will enter to the store, to the restaurant, to the pub, anywhere you are supposed to say like hello and loudly. So many people are shy to say like loud good morning, they are just good morning. <laughs> it but <does> me. <laughs> that's really horrible. I always complain to Gwen like can you say it loudly? It's nothing because wrong about that. I'm really shy to say it loudly <clears throat> because in the Philippines we don't really <clears throat> do those things. So I'm still having hard time adjusting from that um culture. Though it's really nice, you know, it's really nice that people are greeting you even if you don't know these people, they are still going to greet you. But in the Philippines we don't greet strangers, so <laughs> I'm still having a hard time, but we Filipinos are very nice. We smile all the time, even to strangers, but it's just that we don't say hi. We just smile and we don't say hi, we don't greet. It's it's not a Filipino thing, but I'm, I want to, I want to adapt from that culture and I'm still adjusting up until now. That's right. Next is... We are having interesting topic now. <laughs> People are not that smiling. Can you explain please? Because sometimes Kuba, I ask him if you're mad or not because I'm having a hard time to distinguish if he's mad or not because he's not even smiling but he said he's not mad but he's not smiling. It's just not, that's not the thing of being a Czech. They have this kind of German culture, like maybe they adopted this kind of culture of not smiling. That's how I look <laughs> like right now, That how I look the most of the time during the day, like... It's not even smiling, but also it doesn't look like I might. It's just my regular face and it's most of the people <laughs> in the Czech Republic. We are not mad and if you will approach us and you will start talking with us, it will immediately change like according to the occasion or the topic you want to talk about with us. So that's it. Don't be afraid of us <laughs> here in the, in the Czech Republic. We are not biting. Sometimes. Yeah, or maybe I'm just too judgmental, but I get used to um, Filipinos smiling all the time, even to strangers. So I'm still having this kind of adjustments as well. That <clears throat> I should, I should, I should believe that these people are not bad. It's just that they are not smiling. <laughs> <clears throat> Which brings me to the other thing: the southern you go, the southern you go all around the world, the people are happier. So. In the Philippines, in the Spain, in the Greece, Southern America, the people seems to me happier than in those northern parents where where we are, the Czech Republic, Germany, Norway, Finland, the Britain, like that. The phone is dead. Yeah. The next is the toilet. The toilet here is the name WC. <laughs> The first time I was trying to find where's the toilet, I was really lost because in the Philippines we call it CR, CR, but here they call it a WC. Like, why it's WC? Is it washing comfort room? <laughs> but I really don't understand. Like, why it's WC up until now? I really don't understand. I don't know why it's WC because in the Philippines it's CR. We call it CR, short term for comfort room, but I don't know why it's WC. But they call it WC. <clears throat> I also don't know why it's WC, but yeah, that's it. How it is. Yep, the next one is the church. So, in the <clears throat> Czech Republic, you can see huge churches. Like, it looks like a castle already, because already, how big it is. But even if it's, it's big, there are no people inside. Um, it's really amazing for me to know that they have big churches, but people are not religious like unlike in my country we have a very small church and a lot of people who are very religious sometimes even people doesn't fit inside so they have to stay outside during the rain even during um worship days but here in the Czech Republic we have huge churches but people are not that religious <clears throat> yeah we are not I'm not sure if it's just 10 percent of our population is religious I'm not either when it's religious, but I'm not. I I believe in a God and in that panspermic theory that God made that first cell and that's all. And from that first cell started duplicating bacteria, the, the life under the water, then it went the life above the water, on the ground and evolution by itself. Is it correct? So maybe scientifically speaking, 
Is it? It is correct. <laughs> it's not it biblically is. speaking. It is. Yeah. The next surprising shocks for me was tractors. I it was my first time seeing a tractor when I came here in Czech Republic. <coughs> I didn't even know what's a tractor. Yeah. So in the Philippines, we don't use tractors. Um, people cannot afford buying that, so we use carabaos or maybe digging or doing farming using tools like traditional tools. But we don't have tractors, just like here. It's really nice that people are using tractors, so their work in the farm becomes easier compared to just using your hand. Mm, that's correct. But the other thing is the landscape in the Philippines is not appropriate for having a tractor somewhere you cannot even drive the tractor there and here in the Czech Republic or the whole Europe there are like lowlands the plain area and you would not be able to produce that huge demand of foods and grain just with the carabao or bare hands just with tools so that's why using vacuums and washing machines so here in the Czech Republic, they wash using washing machine and they sweep their homes using a vacuum cleaner. So in the Philippines, we don't really have those things. It's not that common, especially in the provinces areas because we are usually using our hands when we are washing our clothes and when we are sweeping our floor, we're using brooms. So that's also the culture shock for me because, you know, I realized as well when I came here in the Czech Republic that your work will be easier if you're gonna use those things. But in the Philippines, you don't have it maybe because number one, those are very expensive and we can't afford. And also, um, it's just that, yeah, it's expensive, that's all. Yeah, that's right. Like. We are having at home this kind of vacuum. It is quite noisy and it can literally wake up all the people, all our neighbors. So the advantage of having just a broom is quite nice. You can just easily swipe it off. If it's, if it's like a <clears throat> huge, huge pieces of the dust or like that. But if it's like some powder or something, it's always better to vacuum it than sweeping the floors with a broom that's it yep the next one is the pub you can literally see pubs everywhere of <laughs> the czech republic and you can find people in the pub yeah they love really? going to the pub yes surprising <laughs> and then yeah we have pubs in the philippines but it's really not that common because usually people are drinking just outside of their house or just inside of their house so pubs are not that common but here in the czech republic this is their number one place to gather <clears throat> in the pub like you can literally see people every day in the pub and um one thing it's different is that they're drinking but we don't have even a karaoke so their way of bonding is just talking and this is also a culture shock for me because in the philippines if you're going together and drinking with a family or friends usually with karaoke and beer but here they don't like noises that much but they instead of they don't like noises but they're talking too loud in the pub <laughs> That's culture shock for me still. But you have to admit, pubs here, it's very fun when you are there, right? Sitting, <laughs> drinking yeah, sitting, beer drinking and just and talking. talking. <laughs> yeah, I think that's funny. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Next for me is people likes to hike all the time. <laughs> that's right, they generally a walking. Yeah, they love walking. And for example, the the way for you to arrive in this place, it takes maybe one hour or two hours for you. Just They just walk like, oh my god, literally, you want to walk? Because in the Philippines, even if it's just one kilometer, we ride. <laughs> it's not even one kilometer. I'm going to tell you a story. Once we were in the Philippines, we decided to go for a weekend vacation. We had and we were we arrived to the beach and we were looking for some room we can stay we and we found some boy who was renting the house and literally we approached him to his office and he told us like i'm going to take you to your to your room you can rent but i got scared because he was sitting on the motorbike and in my mind got 
oh my god he's going to drag us like kilometers away from the sea and we have to walk but no he got on the motorbike and he was riding it i would say 30 meters to show us that room <laughs> he was that lazy to walk that he had to ride that motorbike and yeah. i just stood there like seriously because <laughs> in the philippines we don't really like walking we love just riding and driving and then just it's easier for us to arrive to the destination rather than walking so i'm still i'm still it's still hard for me to actually <clears throat> accept this kind of culture of walking because i'm not really a walker that's right <laughs> and that's why i took gwen today on a hike to find down this amazing spot for making this video right in the middle of nowhere we are surrounded just by the fields and it took us like i would say 30 minutes to walk and gwen was already like almost passed away you can be happy baby that i'm not a german germans are much worse <laughs> yeah talking about that greeting again there is one more way how to say like hello and it's a shaking hands this way good morning good morning <laughs> <laughs> here it's really common and it doesn't happen only when you are meeting someone new it happens also when you are meeting your friend you will shake hands and it's a polite way and also and but you can also make it an impolite way the wrong way once you will shake hands with somebody make sure you will squeeze their hand of course not that much you are going to break all their bones in the hand but squeeze that hand it shows the respect to the other person we have a term that some people really don't know how to shake hands and once you're shaking with their hand it feels like you are holding the dead fish <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because if, I remember the first time I handshake Kuba like when I came here in the Czech Republic he handshake me and I just touched <laughs> he was scolding me that time what are you doing that's so disrespectful <laughs> but I didn't know because in the Philippines even just <clears throat> tapping your hand in handshake that's more than enough for us yeah. But I understand Filipino people yeah. don't know that because once I came there to meet her family and I tried to shake hands with their siblings, I took the hand but nobody returned the handshake to me because they don't do that, they don't use that, that's yeah. why. Okay, the next pro culture shock for me is the... <gasps> she threw away the microphone. Sorry! Next for me is the seat belt actually. So it is required that you should have your seat belt even if you're not a driver if you are if even if you're just a rider even if you're riding at the back you should have your seat belt in the philippines seat belts are not required it's not illegal if you don't have that police officers will never put you in jail or will give you a ticket for not having seat belts but here in the czech republic you are not allowed without a seat belt so you should have it or else you'll get penalized that's right to make to explain the things it's mandatory here in the check to use seat belts because you are driving here very fast like up to the maximum allowed speed is 130 kilometers per hour and if you would hit something in that kind of speed for sure you will die but if you are just going to lower speeds like 50 and you will hit something the seat belts can literally save your life it should be mandatory all around the world Philippines is not an exception but on the other hand in the Philippines you will be happy if you will reach the speed of 30 kilometers at least because of that horrible traffic jumps there nothing can happen to you even without the seat belts you will be safe because going on the roads there is very slow <laughs> Philippines is really not that bad country currently it has the highest growing economics in the world still still is the third world country nowadays but the economic growth is one of the highest really? so the Philippines still have a huge potential in the future becoming pretty amazing country already nowadays it's amazing country but it has potential to be better of course and I'm so excited to see that in the future 
And for now that's all for today guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video when we had a discussion together with Gwen. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting our channel. We all, me, Gwen and you all watching this video are growing slowly together. We are more than happy, right? Yes. Yes, we are. So we are looking forward to better tomorrows every day. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. And see you in the next video with two of us. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Where is the microphone? <laughs> it's already like <laughs> there's no cord anymore. Uh -huh. I feel it all. <laughs> Rest in peace, our microphone. <laughs>